I did mention to you that I'm going to be doing something very special for today. We do have our Ask a Pro guest. So I do have Austin Malema with me. Hey, what's up, Austin? I'm good. How are you, Miss Cosmo? I'm good. Can you see what 2020 is making us do? We're thinking of all the ways that we can work with technology. Listen, this is actually great. Like, now you never have an excuse to miss these interviews because you you were doing something. (laughs) (laughs) You can't tell me you're running late. You can't tell me you're busy at some other funny place. You can't tell me you're in another country. We have technology for a reason, and that's why we're here for you today. You know what I mean? A lot of people know you for your photography skills, but I think the reason why I brought you in, also just to say that you are the pro for this month, is because you are one of the few people who I've noticed who've turned your photography skill into a brand. And not a lot of people can do that especially because photography is always seen as like a secondary art it's something that they're not necessarily taken seriously as much as maybe an artist or maybe a rapper or a performer and especially um in this day and age we have a a lot of artists who actually travel with photographers i think for me one of the biggest things that i I did first was try not to be a a star first you know i wanted people to know my, my work before they knew who i was because as soon as they know who you are you know everything changes but if people know your work they start taking you seriously as uh, as a brand instead of just as a person it's a perception that's already created that you know what this person is a professional this is the type of thing that this person does i created a name for myself that when you mention my name people are like okay cool this is serious so it's yes. austin we got to take this serious. So <laughs> I think that, that's what it was. Definitely. I think it's also one of those things that people definitely related to, especially when it came to your work, because not only were you uh, providing such uh, amazing pictures, but they were like, you know what? If you want to have the right picture, you want your Instagram yes. to pop, you need yourself an Austin Malema picture. How did that come yeah. about? Because I think now everybody's kind of created this like name brand to basically say, oh, if you don't have an Austin Malema picture, uh, you're falling off now. huh? <laughs> I think, you know what? Uh, everybody deserves an Austin Malema picture, <laughs> which is a hashtag that I started a while, about two years ago. Yes. But also, I just believe that, you know, after working with all the celebrities and like personalities that I've got the opportunity to work with, my pictures have proven to be a stamp of approval. Like... Mm you have made it into something. I don't know what that something is, but you have made it into something. And I really love that because that just means that, you know, um, when it comes to photography, I am one of the people that people take seriously, that your work is seen as a a stamp of approval to getting somewhere, you know. Um, I know a lot of people will be going to an event and I used to get this a lot. People are like, hey, are you gonna be at this event? Are you gonna be at this event? And I'm like, yeah. And then they're like, okay, cool. Now we know it's a real event because you're gonna be there. Oh like, okay, goodness, because cool. Austin doesn't take the cheap ones. <laughs> <laughs> I started off by taking the cheap ones though. I guess so, I guess so. Everybody has to start somewhere and I guess that's what the conversation yeah. is about for today. I just wanted to kind of speak to you a little bit about how you also encapsulate yourself within the culture. Because one thing that Austin has been able to do was be able to um, shoot with some of the biggest in uh, the hip hop space as well as just entertainment as a whole. So Austin, you've shot a lot of magazine covers. Some of the biggest yes, that some people might sit back and be like, ah, is that an Austin Malema picture? I think, you know, um, I always felt like, you know, you need to level up no matter what you're doing. And eventing was just a way for me to get into a space where uh, I could meet the people that I wanted to shoot, you know, because um, it's not easy just to try and shoot a a cover with a hip hop star, you know, but if you've got the relationship with the hip hop star and they're doing a cover, you are able to convince them to let you do it. From there on, you know, when magazines would come and say, hey man, uh, we doing, we want to do a cover with you. I get this a lot because now the stars get to decide who their photographer is because of who they like and who they're comfortable with. So I use that I use that to my advantage by having those relationships. I just believe that, you know, I moved around because of the relationships that I built. I think that's the name of the game, especially in the entertainment industry. It would always be um, the relationships. It will always be who do you know? How can they get you through the door? And how do you use that to your advantage? Um, All right. So there was also something very controversial that you did some time back. Um, You managed to... (laughs) 
uh, create a bit of a stir with regards to a hashtag that she yes, started ma'am. called cr- Credit the Photographer. Why photographer, are we crediting yes. the photographer, Austin? Crediting the photographer is about paying it forward because a lot of people will credit everyone else but the photographer. They'll credit the person who designed the dress, the makeup artist, the person who did the hair. And then it's like, if there was no photographer, this beautiful picture would not exist. And you know, you pass, you, you're paying it forward for the other people except for me. And you know, how many times would you reply to like, DMs about, hey man, who's the photographer that took that picture? I'd like to book him. I just felt like, you know what, a lot of people did not understand that by crediting us, you're paying it forward for us to get a few more clients of who you are. So mm-hmm. when people see the picture, they're like, oh my God, I'd love to book the same photographer. You know, that's how most of us actually get bigger in the industry because someone sees you tagging me and saying, hey, this is a picture by, by Austin Malema. And they're like, oh my God, I actually want Austin Malema to take pictures of me. And that's how I grew my name as well, because of all the credits that I got from the people that I followed. Oh, not, not from the drama. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because with that, with <laughs> that we all know me. with that hashtag, you went at one of the biggest. You said, Pell Tusi, you better credit me, my sister. Huh? I'll tell you, I went at, two, at three people and people only know one person. Ooh, one person Austin. still has blocked me right now I hope whoever's listening Whoever's an up and coming photographer right now Don't be like Austin Don't go for them Don't do No, that. don't be like me <laughs> Ask me to tell you how not to do it <laughs> <laughs> But I get it You know what And I think the one thing that maybe some people didn't understand about the hashtag Is that you're saying that people need to pay it forward Because I won't lie I was one of those people as well who I was sitting on the fence with it a little bit because I was like, okay, if I'm going to commission your work, if I'm going to book you and call you to a specific yeah. event and I'm going to pay you to be there, do I really have to then tag you if I'm giving you money already? Look, no, you definitely don't. But I think it's a courteous thing to do. But if you feel like you don't want to do that, that's okay. But like, I don't think that's a relationship that I want to have because you're kind of stifling my growth as well. Because you want to have all the great photos and you want me to be the person taking those photos and no one else to book me for that. What does that mean about my growth? It means that you just want to grow your brand because what I'm doing is creating great content for you and your brand, which is going to grow. And then my brand just stays in this little corner where nobody knows who's taking Miss Cosmos photos, but they're great. And that person has no opportunity to work with other people. So I then they can phone me. (laughs) <laughs> how many how many of your fans can phone you? <laughs> so Austin, one of the things that you were managed managed to do for yourself as well is work on big events in South Africa as well. You worked on Casper's fill up, the Samas, the, the metros, you're out there and you are killing those red carpets. What is that one project or that one event that still makes you nervous when you get that phone call? It'll probably be the Safters or the Samas because you never really know what's going to happen like it's 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 not <laughs> nerves of, of being scared but it's like you know you've done it so many times it's just like i'm nervous because i don't know what's going to go wrong <laughs> not you know <laughs> and if anybody follows austin on social media you know very well that he always complains after every single award ceremony <laughs> so it's just like i i don't know why i do this every year but you still go back <laughs> It's because I'm always hoping every year that something good will come out of it, you know, for, for us as photographers or the, the guys shooting the event. But, you know, I don't think people understand the essentials of planning the event for TV and planning it for those who are there as well and the media. You know, that's that's the one thing that they I seem like they miss. They miss the media that's there on the day and they focus on creating this big show for television, either if it's going live or if it, even if it's recorded for another day mm. and they forget, oh, there's media that's here today. We need to cater to them as well. What do you think some of these events are missing from an aesthetic, maybe photography point of view? Or what are the things that irk you so much that when you go to these events, you're like, they never consider this for us. They never consider that for us. Thank- well, how how can they take things to the next level? Especially because I know hip hop is always lacking something. Ish, my you know my people, but I love it so much. I'm still here. I'm holding on. <laughs> I think the biggest thing that people don't think about is lighting. Number one, you know that's the biggest thing that plays a a, a big factor in your images. If you have the best lighting or the best uh, lighting in your staging, your images always come out amazing. 
because nobody has to worry about that you know so if these guys could work on lighting their stages better that would be great yeah. number two creating spaces for photographers you know um that's the, that's the other thing people just have this big fence and then get the fence right in front of stage and it's like there's no space for us to photograph these people like i'm right my nose is right on the stage what am i <laughs> shooting because I, i'm just looking up somebody's nose and then the third thing would be and it's a nice to have but a media room where all the guys in the media could have a space to work from either shoot edit and connect or drop off their images for their editors that's that's just a nice thing to have at these spaces you know oh shame nice to have Hip hop doesn't have the budget, uh, Austin. I can say that right now. <laughs> you can be a kid. Asna mahali, Austin. Asna mahali. Um. Okay. Speaking. Speaking of speaking of big hip hop events, you've also shot a lot of international artists that have come to South Africa. What's that one picture yes, that you always remember that you took of one international, and you think they remember that picture too, just as much as you do? Damn. Uh, international act. Would probably have to be Migos when they were in South Africa. Mm-hmm. I had a really great picture that, you know, I believe that that picture, if they had seen it, it would have made a difference. You know, um, there's also a picture I took of Post Malone last year when he was smashing the guitar. That really? picture is epic. Did you yeah. get it just when on time? It, just on time, as he smashed it, like that picture. is a great picture. I know a lot of people take pictures and then they get onto Instagram and then they say, "Oh, face tune this, let me photoshop that, let me light room this, let me yeah. do this and that." What is this big facade of trying to change people's original features? Like you're mentioning some people have scars, but maybe that's something that needs to be kept there because you might be retouching thinking they don't want it there, but it's an original part of themselves. Um is it is it is it um frowned upon for you to to try and completely clean somebody's skin and make them look like they're a supermodel even though that's not who they naturally are. Look, I think it's not completely frowned upon. Um we always ask for permission. We always have the subjects input on what we're retouching and how we're retouching it and we always send it to them before we send it to client. We'd always get the subjects approval because they're the main person who has to approve everything. You know, I I get requests from clients to say, "Look, make me look skinny and make me do this do this to me, do this to me." Which for me is it's what they want. You know, I can't I can only do what they want and I can only advise when it sounds crazy where I'm like, "Nah, man, you can't do that. That you can't do." But where we can get away with it, we're going to do it. So people always want the best representation of themselves to be seen out. and that's what we helped them with as well. There was a big hoo ha on social media with regards to you and a, a brand yeah. that you were affiliated with. You were yes. on a video for a photography brand and there was yeah. um a lot of Caucasian faces on that video yeah. and then your little black face at the end. <laughs> and everybody had a lot to say in that video but you were just given the smile and wave moment. which yes, obviously ma'am. blew up on social media to the point where everyone was just like ay ay hey hey what's that line no no hey hey who ha shouting screaming give him a give yes. him some lines give him something to say he's the only one we recognize why is this happening how did yes. that unfold for you i think i think that fight is quite necessary in the industry right now because um there's a lack of black representation in terms of photography brands um most of the industry has been pro white uh for the longest time you know uh even the industry itself is very white um if we have to be honest uh and i just feel like there's a lot of black young people who are coming into the industry spending their own hard earned money or their parents hard earned money buying this gear trying to grow themselves into professionals as well and i just feel like we were never recognized or like you know people never saw that we own a part of the market as the black industry and now you know the conversation has become a bigger and better conversation that's so dope man i'm glad that things kind of escalated in a positive direction for you you see when south africa fights for you austin <laughs> when we make you trend austin malema 
Huh? Now look, now you're getting bigger coins. <laughs> but thank you so much for your time, Austin. Thank you for uh, the moments and the gems that you've shared for today because I do think all those people who are aspiring uh, photographers or maybe just want to work within the brand and entertainment space, they've definitely taken something away from this conversation. 5FM. Watch 5FM TV on YouTube. 5FM Radio. Radio.